Our next information item is the employee compensation review. Um, this is also another component of our budget, and it's a, a more of a historical look of our employee compensation um, from the past. So I know, Dr. Swift, do you do you want to introduce this item? Or would... I just, uh, Ms. Minnick has brought this uh, ready. Uh, yep. It's fully baked and ready to go. Um, we do know that the because we are people dense, the large largest majority of our entire budget is human resource. We are human resource, and so this is the purpose for this is to kind of show what that looks like. Um, I think, yeah, Miss Manning, mm -hmm. thank you. So, as Dr. Swift mentioned, tonight we're going to take a broad look at our employee compensation. And we'll be reflecting on salaries and benefits over the past few years. The first slide illustrates Ann Arbor Public Schools' total salaries and benefits expenditures for the past three years. And this is for all employees funded by the general fund. And you can see there was a slight increase in 1415 and then a significant increase in 1516. The next slide is a illustration of the salary of the superintendent position. We can see that the superintendent's salary was at a higher level in 1213. It was lowered in 1314 and it has remained constant since that time. No increases and no decreases. The next slide is the Ann Arbor Public Schools additional authorized increases in employee compensation. The increase in teacher compensation is highlighted in blue, where support staff is highlighted in green. And support staff is all other employee classifications except hourly positions. We can see that the total dollar increases in employee compensation amounted to $5.1 million. And we can see that the total dollar costs for each group is illustrated and shown next to each block with a total dollar value of those compensation increases on the top of the, the bar in blue. Mm -hmm. The percentages listed there on top of the block of 1516 and 1617, the 1% and the 2.3%, those percentages indicated for compensation increases is a percentage of the prior year total salaries and retirement and FICA costs. The next slide is a slide produced by our external auditors, Plant Moran, as part of the review of our audit report back in November of 2016. This slide illustrates total general fund expenditures for the fiscal year 1516. The colored wedges represent categories of expenditures as defined by the state of Michigan. So we must report all of our expenditures in accordance with these state-defined categories. And we can see that the total expenditures in the general fund for 1516 is at the top, in the right top right box, $211 million. And of those total expenditures, total salaries and benefits total $174 million. Further, salaries and benefits comprised 82.5% of those general fund expenditures. The 82.5% is represented by the larger blue and green wedges. The blue represents the salaries and benefits, and the green represents retirement, which is also a benefit for our employees. So as Dr. Swift mentioned, 82.5% of our general fund expenditures is a major investment in our human resource capital. The next slide is the total general fund salaries and benefits expenditures for the 15-16 fiscal year. It is another slide produced by our external auditors as part of our audit report last November. And we can see that the total amount of salaries and benefit expenditures, again, was $174 million. 
And that is comprised of those five categories listed there, again defined by the state. The blue wedge represents salaries and wages. The red represents retirement contributions. Green represents health insurance. Purple is FICA costs. And then the small orange wedge represents other types of benefits, including vision, dental, life, and long-term disability. The next slide is the general fund breakdown of salaries and benefits. And these amounts are broken down by functionality. And again, these are categories according to state requirements. But we can see that the large blue wedge and the red wedge together comprise school-based salaries and benefits. Those are our instruction and instructional support salaries and benefits in our school building administration. And that total of salaries and benefits, again, for all employees is 174 million, but 95% of those expenditures are school-based salaries and expenditures, totaling $166.1 million. That amount is not shown on this graph, but of the 174 million, 166 million is school-based salaries and benefits. The next slide is an illustration of the total health-related insurance costs borne by the district for the last seven years. Again, this is a slide presented by our external auditors. And you can see that there was a significant decrease in the costs to the district in 2011 as a result of offering lower cost health care plans for our employees. And since that time, you can see that there was a uh, pretty steady but small incremental increase. But we do see an additional $500,000 in employer costs for health care in fiscal year 1516. The next slide is an illustration of our foundation allowance over the last 10 years or so. And you can see that in 0809, during this time period, was our peak at $9,723 per pupil. We had a significant decline in 0910, and we had another significant decrease in 2011, 2012. And since that time, we've only seen small incremental increases to our foundation allowance. And we'll be talking more about foundation in the next couple slides as well. On this slide, we have included the projected amount of per pupil foundation for 1718 at an amount of $9,280 per pupil. And that is the governor's or executive uh, budget proposal. And that is the amount that we have included in our 1718 proposed budget. The next slide is a slide prepared by the House Fiscal Agency. And the purpose of this slide is to indicate the per pupil foundation allowances increases and decreases for each fiscal year for about the last 20 years. And I want to point your attention to the large blue bar that falls below the line. And in that year, fiscal year 12, 11, 12, all school districts in the state of Michigan sustained a $470 reduction per pupil in their funding. And that was a significant decrease in every school district's revenues. But you can see that since that time, some districts have recouped that loss and others haven't. The green bars represent districts that are funded at the minimum foundation level. And you can see that those districts have seen an increase over the last five years of $120, $110, $175, $140, and $120. And the total of that amount is $665. So they have recouped that $470 loss we saw in 2012. By contrast, Districts funded at the state maximum are shown in the dark blue, and those increments total $210. So districts funded at the state maximum have not recouped that loss of 470, not even half of it. The loss of the 470 in fiscal year 11-12 amounted to about seven, seven and a half million dollars for Ann Arbor Public Schools. The next slide 
is an illustration of Ann Arbor Public Schools Section 20J funding. And Ann Arbor Public Schools, along with 39 other districts in the state of Michigan, experienced an additional loss of funding, the elimination of 20J funding in 2009-2010. Section 20J funding is a section of the State School Aid Act that allows hard, uh, hold harmless districts to collect the full per pupil funding increases given to all other districts in the state regardless of inflationary caps. So when the funding was eliminated in 2009-2010, Ann Arbor Public Schools lost significant funding. And the accumulated total of that loss now amounts to nearly $31 million. And Ms. Minnick, and for trustees in our community that aren't familiar with 20J funding, um, is that foundation allowing or general fund dollars? Yes, it is. Okay. So our loss was was basically foundation allowance. This is a categorical, so it doesn't always show up in that data, but That's it correct. is an incremental. It's an additional hit to our foundation allowance per student that we use for general fund purposes. Meaning, our reduction for paying our teachers and staff in two thousand nine. We started with a $233 per student loss that no other districts, I believe, in Washtenaw County had. Correct. So there's, there are 39 other districts, but none of them are in Washtenaw County. So we were the only district in Washtenaw County to have this, and then two years later, 470. And then if we're looking at the recovery rate, um, Ann Arbor specifically, uh, I think we're, we're net negative $23 then from where we were before, if you include the 470 plus the 233 plus all the incremental gains we've made since then, it's, an, it's a, still a net loss, actually, of $23 per student. Is that correct? I agree that it is still a net loss. Well, it's two, 210 two, increase, mm -hmm. plus if we add in the 233 decrease that isn't in that chart, our net impact for that duration is a negative $23 per student still, whereas any of those that were minimally funded are at above 200 from the 470 loss, something like that. Uh, just two things. Um, first of all, if I may go back to the math of our funding losses. Yep. In 2012, we lost funding of $470 per pupil. Yep. We've also lost $233 for yep. people in funding. Mm -hmm. But we've only only recouped $210. So my oh. math would show that we still have a loss of $493 per pupil. Okay. And I, in terms of the conversation about funding and um, whether it's been lost or whether we ha just don't have it anymore, I think the overall context of the presentation is to demonstrate that during those challenges of seeing reduced funding, Ann Arbor Public Schools has still attended to investing in its greatest resource, its staff. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, is significant, it was a significant challenge to continue programming and staffing and all the other things with such a significant decrease in funding, mm -hmm. but yet Ann Arbor Public Schools has attended to that in the most recent years. When we talk about well, it's 2017, haven't we recovered? Um, and, and certainly we heard that in public commentary tonight is, is we should have, you know, we're better. And yet when we look at the loss and what we've done since those losses, you're, you're saying we are $703 less, right? No. I'm sorry. Four hundred ninety-three net less. Four ninety-three yeah. less net than we were yeah. per pupil. Per right. pupil on any given year between two thousand twelve and now, and my math is to take the four hundred and seventy dollar loss, uh -huh. add to that another loss of two thirty-three mm -hmm. for twenty J funding. Yeah, but we have recouped two hundred and ten dollars in those small increments there on slide ten in an amount of $210. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trustee Gaynor. 
the is the twenty J money included in this graph? No, it isn't. That's, no. Okay. But I think it's an important comparison because I keep hearing us compared to other districts in our county, and no other district in our county lost twenty J funding, and no other district I think is quite in our funding category. So so we are net down quite a bit per student, almost five hundred dollars per student, um, which is an important comparison when you look at any other district, because they're getting twice the amount of recovery dollar, you know, dollars per student uh, increase as we are every year, just about. Um, I did want to speak for a moment. People have asked, what's, your, what's our position? What's your stance? Why can't you just tell us um, that, you know, your, your position in negotiations? And I did want to speak to the negotiation process for a moment that we're mutually committed to with the AAEA in particular um, right now. And that is a, a process where we have both designated a negotiations team. We are looking at uh, you know, different proposals and different ideas, but those are all conducted in confidence. And so you're not going to find any one singular trustee tell you where they are at because it would essentially violate the spirit and the fact of our negotiations process that we're all committed to. Um, what we're trying to share tonight with, you know, we're we need to pass a budget, that's one thing. These things all go into our thinking about a budget. We also wanted to show some data because it seems like there's some very different interpretations of what the board has approved in the recent past in terms of incremental compensation to our employees and we do, when the past two years we've tried to do this holistically so what we agree to from a percent perspective with one group we we really try to be consistent across all bodies if we can and so that's at least a precedence we've set for the last two years I don't know how that will go this year but we've we've had two years in a row of doing that and trying to be um, somewhat fair in that way but that's really um, just a close look at our recent past, a reality check on our funding, a reality check when we get compared to other districts for where we really are compared to other districts so that people have at least some data to work with um, that, that we have in terms of the data we're looking at. But we are very much confident in our negotiating teams and the process that they have so that um, we will reach an agreement that is in the best interest of both parties. And that will be the case for all of our negotiating teams is our hope. So that work is going on now. We're committed to that process and we're committed to maintaining the confidentiality of that process um, as, it, as it unfolds. And hopefully we'll see that real soon. It's June 14th. We need a budget passed by June 30th. And uh, that means all parties uh, hopefully will have some agreements in place by then too. So we're really close in terms of timing for, for what we hope to have in place with all of our um, bargaining units and staff for next year. And this coalesces, it has to, <laughs> for the board, what we can approve as a budget. So all of this activity is, is happening right now. But I just did, did want to speak to why you won't hear any single trustee tell you where they stand or how they're, what their proposal is. That is all under the purview of attorney-client privilege and um, part of our negotiating process that we've mutually agreed to with our bargaining units. So, so you'll not hear that uh, from this table. Okay, I think that is very good. Thank you, Ms. Minnick, for putting this together and helping us just refresh where we've been, and, and uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.